Welcome all to this tutorial. Today I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can set your devel development environment up. Now I personally am using a Linux environment, Linux operating system. Here I'll, sh I'll show you how you can actually install the IDE via the terminal, but I'm guessing that most people are using Windows. So also I will show you how to do it in Windows. Now keep in mind that the procedure for Windows and for Macs it's pretty much the same. I mean, it's very, very, very similar. If you really need me to show you how to install code blocks on a Mac, just send me a PM or something like that, and I'll make an extra video. We just download a file and run it. That's basically it. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can conduct an installation on Windows and how you can do it on Linux. So it's fairly simple. As I said, I will be using a I don't believe it. I'm not sure if I've actually mentioned it in the intro, but I will be using a Windows machine in the uh, for the. I will be using a Windows virtual machine for the demonstrations of this tutorial. But it really doesn't matter which operating system you are using. Once the development environment is set up, it will be the same across all platforms. It will look the same across all platforms and you will use it in pretty much the same fashion across all platforms again. So the integrated development environment that I have chosen today to use today is basically code blocks. Why code blocks? Well, for Linux, it doesn't really matter. For Linux, you can use pretty much whatever development environment you want, and they're all fairly easy to set up. But for Windows, sometimes you can have compiler problems, and you need to link it manually. It can get complicated. However, with code blocks, you get a compile. You get a compiler with the integrated development environment. So you basically, just have uh, a file which you download and run, and that's it. You can begin your programming session. It's fairly easy. No, no difficult. There is nothing particularly difficult to do there. I mean, it's fairly easy, so you don't have to worry about it. That is the primary reason why I have chosen to use code blocks due to the ease of setup. I generally tend to use Eclipse for C++ or for Java. I don't do a lot of work in Java anyway, but for Python, I tend to use Spider. Those are all those are all the uh, development environments which you can set up. Now, some of you might ask me why don't you use Visual Studio, blah blah blah. But yeah, you have to base Visual Studio is a pretty complex development environment and. I don't like the way things are compiled when you take Visual Studio. For example, in the Keylogger course, when we were while we, while the Keylogger was being made, if it was compiled, for example, in Visual Studio, there would always be it wouldn't behave the way we wanted it to behave. But for example, if we compiled it uh, within Code Blocks with a compiler that came with Code Blocks, it would behave exactly the way we have intended it to behave. So I don't know, those are just some of my own personal preferences. To tell you the truth, and to be honest with you, you can use any development environment for this course that you want. Just set it up and make sure that it's running, that it's functional, and you won't have any problems with it as long as you as long as it comes with a compiler or that you can or that you know how to link a compiler to the development environment. So let me just quickly show you how you can install it in Linux. Just open up a terminal. Type in DNF search code blocks, and there you go. So you have you indeed have code blocks right here. So you can type in DNF install code blocks, and this will basically just go ahead, run, and install code blocks without any problems or difficulties. It is in the default repositories, and I personally find that the installation is probably the easiest in Linux. You just type in one command and it's done. You don't need to go visit any sites. You don't need to go searching for it online. You just have your internet connection. You type in a single command. It gets pulled from the repositories, installed, and set up for you in the com to the fullest of extents. So let me just launch it to make sure that it's running, to make sure that everything is fine. Code blocks. Okay. Current default compiler, GNU GCC, yep, that is what I want. As you can see, there are some other ones, but it doesn't really matter. This one will do just fine. That's what we want. And there you go. So it runs. So this is how CodeBlocks looks in Linux. 
Now you will remember it because you will see exactly the same exactly the same layout in Windows. It looks exactly the same. There are pretty much no differences of whatsoever. So let me just go ahead and close it because I don't really need it here. If you're using this is for RP this is the way to install it on Fedora. If you're using Ubuntu or a Debian based distribution, you can just type in apt get install code blocks. This should work. Should work on pretty much any Debian system without any problems. If you're using some other Linux that ha that's not using the apt-get or that's not using the DNF, you can just type in the command that is used to install basically here. And space install space code blocks, it should work without any problems. Keep in mind that you can also pretty much use the same procedure as you do on the same procedure as on Windows for Linux as well. You can just download it from the net and run the file. So that's also an option. Okay, so let me just move this terminal away onto my other screen. And here is a Windows setup. So Windows setup is also fairly easy. Let me just go ahead and expand this across the full screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Firefox. And let's type in code blocks. Fairly simple. Open up the website. It's going to be the first one. In chance, If you type in code blocks, chances are that it's going to be the very first one. Okay, so you have a lot of documentation here that you can read about it. That you can read if you want. No big deal. Uh, go into downloads. Uh, we would like to download the binary release. You can also download the source code if you want to examine it. And here you have, like, I don't know, if you're a Mac user, just go ahead and click on Mac OS X. It's going to drop you down, and there you go. That's the file that you download and that you run that you don't actually need to do pretty much anything else. Uh, oh, 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 what is it? Code blocks. Ah, uh, okay, so you don't really have the latest one uh, for Mac. But. Yeah, they're looking for Mac developers. So if you are, if you feel like you want to do it, you can apply. It's uh, it's out there, you know. It's very good. It's very good learning. Uh, best way to learn, actually. But anyway, that doesn't really matter now. So you see, you have also for Linux 32-bit and Linux 64-bit, whichever one you want. And you also have, since this is a demo for Windows, you also have here for Windows. So you have Windows XP, Windows Vista 7, 8.8, 8.1, and Windows 10. Okay, so you just go ahead basically and click on it. And here you have multiple choice options again. So let me just see which one do we need. We need the one with the min GW compiler, uh, which is going to be this one, setup exit. So just go ahead. So once again, look, it's this one. I am selecting it. Don't, uh, don't, don't miss it. So if you download something else, chances are that you're going to encounter problems. So it's one, two, three, the fourth one from the top. And then you go ahead and click on sourceforge.net. It says download of code blocks will start in like three, four, five seconds, whatever. Excellent. So you have chosen to open code blocks, exit, okay, save file. By the way, let me just tell you that when downloading exe files from the net and running them on your PC, make sure, I mean absolutely make sure that you trust uh, the source of your download and that you trust the developers of that program, especially when downloading closed source applications. Codeblocks is not a, co a closed source application, it's open source application. You can actually download the source code itself and have a look around if you want. No big deal there. But I'm just saying that um, when you download exe files, doesn't matter if the course is mine or someone else's or if you're looking at a YouTube tutorial or whatever, and when somebody says, okay, now you need to go to this website, download this exe file and run it on your PC. Like, don't, don't take that at face value. Like, think about it a little bit. Examine the source, where you're downloading it from, what, what are you downloading? Uh, don't just download exit files and run them on your PC. It can it can cause you a ton load of problems. So 
just go ahead and click on this or go into downloads basically and run it. Yes, it doesn't matter which browser you're using. I personally am using Firefox. I really prefer Firefox across all of my devices. Uh, so welcome to Codeblocks setup. Next, I agree. Okay, so all these things need to be selected. Uh, click on next, install, and it's going to run. So now you can just leave it and let it roll. Eventually it's going to get there. The installation process is surprisingly a little bit slower on Windows, probably because it's a virtual machine and it is not as fast as my main machine. You can see that the icon appeared in the upper left corner as well. Excellent, so it's gonna finish. The beauty of it is, as I said, is that it comes with a compiler, so there's no need for linking or any of that, or any of those complications that come around with Eclipse or some other ID. Although I do, I do prefer actually Eclipse for when I'm working on a project or something like that. It does come with a good amount of good amount of pretty good amount of options. So, do you want to run code blocks now? No, thank you. We shall run it when we're done. Okay, click next, finish, close. Yep, there we go. So it's done and over with. And I, what I wanted to say is that code blocks not that it lacks options, but it's probably one of the best development environments for learning, probably the best. And you can also do some very serious work in it. So let's go ahead and open it up, run it. Anytime, there you go. So look, it, let me just go ahead and minimize the v virtual machine. And let me go ahead and run code blocks here. Okay, so do you notice the similarity? It looks pretty much the same, right? So this is Linux and this is Windows. So the development environment looks the same and it's going to look pretty much exactly the same on a Mac as well. So you don't need to actually worry about that either. There are no problems there of whatsoever. It's all pretty much the same. The, the development environments and the installation procedure is also fairly simple. There aren't that many, there are pretty much no complications with it. So let me just go ahead and expand this to full screen. If you want to create a new project, you just go, this is ba this is just a very, very, very basic site. As we progress through the tutorial, as we progress through the tutorial downwards and as we go into into more complex stuff, as we begin learning, etc., I will introduce the various options in code blocks. But I just want to show you how to create a project. So you just go ahead and click on file, you go into new, you go into project, you go you click on console application, click on go, next, select C make sure that C is selected here. Next whatever you can name your project. Can, I'm just gonna name mine test for now. You can select the folder where you would like to save your project. This is this is arbitrary, I mean, wherever you, you save it wherever you want. It makes no difference to me. I'm, I will be doing my saves on desktop because I will delete them later on anyway. And go ahead and click on next. You don't need to change anything here, just click on finish and you will get your first C++ uh, project. This is a generic thing that's generated by code blocks, can be changed. Main is here. What all of this is, how it all works, all of this will be explained. Now, another key thing is that if you want to, like, for example, delete a file, uh, actually, if you want to delete a project, you it's a bit strange. You first need to go ahead and go into close project and then go into the file like here wherever I have saved it uh, chapter 4 code blocks I have no idea where I've saved it let me just go into properties see users test desktop chapter 4 loops okay I seem to have used a previous folder okay so uh, yep it's right here so look, if you want to delete this project, you need to first close the project and then find it in the file system. So mine is here and then delete it. 
the reason why you see chapter four loops, we're going to get to that, is due to the fact that I usually cast at least like 50% of the course or something like that. And then I come back and make the intro for the course and set up. I don't know. I just find it easier that way. But hey, you know, many people and many different tastes and ideas. Okay, so now that you have your integrated development environment set up, configured, up and running, I am going to go ahead and bid you farewell here and hope to see you in the follow-up tutorial where we will actually start coding.